So far in our work with derivatives, we've always used the definition of the derivative as a limit to find the derivative. But you've noticed that it's kind of complicated and it takes a long time. So we're going to develop a more efficient way to uh, find the derivative using a set of differentiation rules, which are shortcuts. Now, don't just memorize the rules, but remember, we need to practice them. Um, and then if you do lots of examples, you'll get better. So the first rule is the rule with the constant. So if you think about it, if you think of the derivative as a slope and we find the slope of a constant. So let's say I have this little graph here. And because it's just a number, so let's say that we have this number and it just goes like this and it's a constant value. It's always going to be, let's say one. If I asked you to find the slope of that value or this line, we will know that it's always going to be zero. So the slope or the derivative of any constant number is always going to be zero. So if I asked you what's the derivative of four, you would say the derivative of four is zero. So this makes sense because a constant does not change and the derivative gives a rate of change. All right, the second rule is called the power rule. So the power rule states that uh, we're going to, if we have x to the power of n, we're going to take that exponent n, we're going to move it to the front, and we're going to multiply that by x to the power of n minus 1. So instead of n, which what it was before, we're going to take 1 less than what the exponent was before for our new exponent. So this rule is called the power rule because it tells you how to differentiate a power of the variable. In words, you're going to bring down the power and then you're going to decrease the power by one. Okay. So this is where we were talking in class. Uh, remember it was x to the power of three, but we noticed that when we graphed it, it was actually x to the power of two. And that's not a coincidence. It actually um, is because one less. So if you have x to the power of five, we're going to bring the five down to the front. So now be five and then times x to the power of 4. So we're going to decrease our exponent by 1. If it's 13, we'll have 13 times t, and then now be to the power of 12. And this occurs even with negative exponents. So if it's wider than negative 2, it'll be negative 2 times y. We're going to decrease the power by 1. So now it'll be negative 3. And if you want to make a positive exponent, we can also write this as negative two divided by y cubed. So notice that n can be any real number. Okay. So our next rule is called the constant times the function. So when we have a constant uh, number and we multiply it by some function, let's say it was a polynomial, we can ignore the constant. So multiply it and move it to the outside, but then we're just going to take the derivative of the function itself. So for example, in this case, we can say that this is going to be 5 times, and we're just going to take the derivative of x to the 7. So this gives us 5 times 7 x to the 6. So we're going to bring the exponent down, subtract 1 from the exponent, so it becomes 6. And then 5 times 7 is 35x to the 6. So this rule says that constants may be pulled out when you differentiate. So another way to think of this is when the constant, so sorry, another way to think of this is that the constant just sits there. So we don't change it. Uh, while the thing that it multiplies gets differentiated. Now don't confuse this rule with the first rule. Remember the derivative of a constant all by itself is zero. But when we have, when we have a constant multiplied in that, um, it still stays in the front. Now in the other situation, the constant was by itself. Okay, so um, we can take little shortcuts. So if you want, for example, instead of going um, 5 times 7 and then x to the 6. We can actually just go 5 times 7 
and just write 35 x to the 6 right away and that's okay. Um, the next one is the sum and the difference which we'll put together. So the derivative of a sum, so if I have two functions added together, it's the sum of the derivatives. Same with the difference. Oh, and this should actually say difference. So the derivative of a difference is the difference of the derivative. So what this looks like is just saying that I can differentiate f of x plus the derivative of g of x. And then similarly, I can say the derivative of f of x and then minus the derivative of g of x. So if I take a look at this example here, compute the derivative, I'm going to find the derivative of each of these terms. Okay, so I'm not going to actually write this all out. You can if you like. Um, actually, you know what? We'll do it for the first one. So we would say the derivative of 5x to the 4 minus the derivative of x cubed plus the derivative of 2x plus the derivative of of pi. So we have the derivative of 5x to the 4, so we're going to go 5 times 4, which is 20, and then we have x cubed minus 3 times x squared plus 2. Now don't get tricked, pi is actually a number, so this is going to be 0. And next is the product rule. So the product rule is quite a bit longer than the other ones. Um, so when we multiply two functions together, uh, the derivative of them is the derivative of the first function. Oops, so let me, sorry, let me write this again. Times the second function, left alone, plus the first function, and then times the derivative of the second function. Now this looks like a lot, so what might be easier to remember is f prime of x times g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. So differentiate these two functions. So they are two functions that are multiplied together. Uh, we have two binomials. So we're going to say the derivative, which is y prime. So the derivative of the first function is going to be 8x and then minus 0. And then we're going to multiply it by the second function, but we don't change it. And then plus the first function, unchanged. But then we multiply by the derivative of the second function. So 7x cubed becomes 21 times x squared. And then the derivative of x, remember it has a 1x in the front, the constant <clears throat> number. So that will be plus 1. And then x will be to the power of 0, since it used to have a 1. So x to the power of 0 is just 1. So then we can close our bracket. And then that's it. And we can leave it like this. We don't have to expand it. It's kind of uh, a lot of time. So we're going to leave it like this, and that's that's good enough. All right, the second one, let's do the same thing. So we're going to take the derivative of 1 plus x, which is going to be 0 plus 1. And we leave the second one unchanged. <clears throat> plus 1 plus x. And then the derivative of root x. Now, actually, before we do that, I want to rewrite this so you can see it a little bit better. This will be 1 plus x. And then the second function, instead of root x, let's write this as x to the power of a half. So we'll write it with an exponent. So then it's easier for you to see what we can do. So when we take the derivative of x to the half, we bring down the exponent. So that would be half. And this will be x. And then we subtract 1 from the exponent. So half minus 1 will be negative a half. Now it's nice to maybe simplify this a little bit. 
So y prime, now this 0 plus 1 is just 1. So I have root x plus 1 plus x. And then actually this is going to be a fraction. So I'm going to put this over 2. And then the x and the negative half, the negative means that I'm going to move my base, which is x, to the denominator. And then the exponent will then become positive. Okay, so I will have x to the power of positive a half, but let's now change positive a half back to root x. And then when I write it like this, I can take out my brackets in the numerator. All right, our next rule is the quotient rule. So the quotient rule um, is a little bit long, even longer than the multiplication rule. So we take the derivative, and I'm going to use the short notation. So we take the derivative of the numerator times the denominator, left unchanged, but this time instead of adding, we're going to subtract. So it's going to be minus the first, the numerator, times now the denominator, the derivative of the denominator. But there's more. So we divide all of this by the denominator squared. Okay, so let's take a look at what this example looks like. So we have y prime, so the derivative of the numerator would be 3x squared plus 4x times our denominator minus x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1, we don't change it, times the derivative of our denominator, which is just 1, because the derivative of 5 is going to be 0. Okay, so all of this is divided by, actually we'll put a 1 there so you can see, all divided by x plus 5 all squared. And let's just do a little bit of simplifying. Uh, this one we will simplify, so we're going to get 3x cubed plus 15x squared plus 4x squared plus 20x and then minus x cubed, minus 2x squared, and plus 1. All divided by x plus 5, all squared. And then let's just combine our like terms. So 3x cubed minus x cubed is 2x cubed, plus 15 plus 4 is 19, minus 2 is 17x squared, plus a 20x, and then plus 1. All of this divided by x plus 5, all squared. So note that if either the top or the bottom is just a number, it is better to not use the quotient rule. So if the number is on the bottom, you can divide each term by the denominator and then use the sum or difference rule. So for example, let's say that we have x squared plus 12x minus 9 divided by 3. Then if I want you to differentiate that, it's probably easier to think of this as x squared over 3 plus 4x minus 3 instead of using this complicated um, quotient rule. So then this becomes, oh, we're going to bring the exponent down, so this will become 2. So this will become 2 thirds x to the power of 1. And the derivative of 4x is just 4 and the derivative of negative 3 is going to be 0. Now, if the number is on the top, you can use the reciprocal rule with the constant times the function rule. So when you use the, if you actually use the quotient rule, this actually shortens to become the negative derivative of the denominator all divided by f of x squared. So we'll just take a look at 1 here. So if we do this, this will be negative. We take the derivative of the denominator, which is x, so that will be 1. And then we take our denominator, which is x, and we square it. And that's it.